Hey, so guys, Arxel here, and since that Arc Remaster is coming out soon, I decided I wanted to look back on the current game and do an Arc Story Map Ranking. Now before I get a bunch of questions and crap in the comments, I'm going to make a few quick notes about myself in the ranking. First off, this list will be from worst to best with me listing what I think are the positives and negatives of each map, and at the end I'm going to give my overall game thoughts. Also, these maps will just be the story ones, not the free DLC maps. If you want to see a ranking on those, just let me know in the comments. Additionally, I have over 2k hours of playtime, and this will only be from a PvE, mostly single player perspective. I have not dabbled much into the PvP side of the game, but from what I heard, it is a burning hellscape that the devs don't take care of properly, so I think I'm on the right side here. Also, for any newbies you don't want to get spoiled on the story, I will be mentioning the endings and bosses in this video, so you have been warned. With all that intro bullcrap out of the way, let's get into the ranking. In last place, at number 6, we have Genesis Part 1. The map that went super ambitious with its format, doing a mission system to get to the boss instead of the classic artifact system, and a teleporting system to get around the map instead of dino traversal. Before I get into my reasons why I don't think this system works in ARC, I want to list some of the positives this map brings. First off, the creatures this map brings are pretty well made, for the most part, with each biome bringing its own unique creature to it. Like the Bloodstalker in the Bog has a really fun traversal mechanic that makes you feel like Spooderman. And the Magma Sword from the Volcanic has really good resource collection. The Ferox in the Arctic, who you think is cute but turns into like a element cocaine monster. And then the Astrocetus, which is like a giant space field that shoots freaking lasers. And then there's the Megashalon. It's a... It's a turtle. Next positive I want to bring up is that even though I hate the majority of the missions on this map, there are some like the Gauntlet that are actually pretty fun. The missions in general also give out insanely good rewards, and on top of the HLNA shop, the overall normal art grind on this map is honestly not too bad. The final, and what I would consider the best positive of this map, is the final boss. It's considered by most to be the most challenging in the game, and honestly I like it a lot for that. Mostly because on top of being so difficult, it is also so different from the traditional arc boss fight. You aren't fighting the boss directly most of the time, you have to also be on foot for a lot of it, collecting keys. This makes your character super vulnerable, and that means this fight in general requires a lot more skill and prep compared to most. I will say those beams during the end part can be quite annoying. They are a big part of why this fight is so difficult, so I'll let it slide. Now onto the reasons why this map is last on my list, aka the negatives. First, I think we should start with the whole mission system. If you didn't know already, to get to the final boss on this map, you have to complete a certain amount of missions depending on the difficulty. Where it gets ridiculous is for the harder difficulties, you have to complete all the missions multiple times on different difficulties. With a lot of these missions getting incredibly boring fast, and some being literally unbeatable on single player, it makes for a truly awful experience. However, the main dislike I have with these is that the missions really restrict the player, forcing you to do a certain task. And in a sandbox survival game like Ark, I don't think it's the right way to go. The next big downside in my opinion is the traversal of this map. The biomes are locked behind barriers, so it pretty much forces you to use the teleportation system to get around. This again makes the player feel restricted. Especially since you can tame flyers on this map, but you can't even use them. Speaking of creatures, the X creatures on this map are very dumb. If you don't know already, all X creatures have a 250% damage boost and a 60% damage resistance in the wild. This makes fighting slash taming them a pain. And since you don't even get the bonuses when you tame them, this plus the resistance has many times literally steered me away from even taming them. <gasps> now onto the last annoying thing about this map in my opinion, the biomes. Every single biome except the ocean and maybe the arctic are completely unlivable. This makes building bases feel super restricted. Every biome has something super annoying about it too that they added. The entire blizzard zone in the arctic, bug swarms constantly spawning when you're in the bog, the volcano randomly erupting shooting around insta-killing lava rocks, the whole lunar biome being an entire hostile hellscape, and even the ocean has these stupid water tornadoes that throw around your dinos constantly. Okay, I think that's enough complaining about this map. Let's go to number 5. On what I would say is the complete opposite side of the spectrum in terms of ambition compared to Gen 1 is Scorched Earth. But the only reason it is above Gen 1 being the fact that the main gameplay has not changed so drastically to negatively affect it. However, this is also its biggest downside in my opinion, with the map not having anything super unique about it. I'll go on about this more later, 
but just like before, we'll start with the positives. With the landscape being super barren yet hostile, and water being a constant issue, I think this map captures the desert vibe really well. And trust me, I would know, I lived in one myself. Another positive in my opinion is the addition of wyverns. These guys are super fun to use while also having the pretty fun taming method of stealing an egg from some very defensive parents. The other creatures this map adds are also pretty fun additions as well, which is probably something you're going to hear me say a lot about maps on this list. That's about where the positives end for me unfortunately, but now for the negatives. The main thing I want to talk about here is just how stale this map feels as I was mentioning before. Unlike the other maps in the game, the entire map just feels like one biome, that being a desert of course. This with the caves for getting to the boss also being pretty samey and not very challenging makes it all unfortunately feel pretty boring. It doesn't bring anything unique to its progression format, and even when you get to the final boss itself, the best strat for the Manticore is just Rex rushing. Oh, it is cool you can bring Wyverns to this fight, it definitely isn't the best move, as the platform to teleport you to it is not really big enough to bring a Wyvern army. And another thing that is super odd about this fight is the boss has a low amount of health compared to most bosses, but massive resistance. I see little point in this, as just increasing the boss's health with no resistance would give the exact same effect, but make the fight feel less awkward. While it is annoying the map turned out like this, looking back I can see why it happened. Since for some reason this DLC was released when Ark was still in early access, so obviously it wasn't going to come out with an insane amount of content. But I'm so glad that the devs at least came back recently and finally gave the map a great ascension ending. But I still hope for some more things to get added when it comes out with ASA, so it feels more in line with the other maps. Other than that, there's not much else to talk about this map, so let's just go to number 4. N2 is a pretty interesting map to me as I was just considered a much improved version of Gen 1, with it fixing a lot of the issues Gen 1 had. At the end of the day, however, it is still Gen 1, with its core gameplay staying pretty similar, which is why I still have it ranked fairly low. Either way, as always, we will start with the positives. Starting out, I will say the mission system is done a lot better here, with the missions generally being more fun, except the canoe mission, the canoe mission can die. Also, not having to beat them multiple times on different difficulties is a really nice change. Also, yes, as always, the new creatures here are pretty cool. And unlike Gen 1, the R variant creatures on this map aren't annoying and just simply have some unique patterns for classic dinos that I like. Final thing I want to say is a positive for this map is the ending. Although the gameplay is laggy as hell, I am a big fan of the ending cinematic and I think it wraps up the story well, while also giving Arc 2 a nice beginning. And David Tennant is a chad and he does a fantastic job voicing Rockwell. First thing I want to mention as a negative and why this map is ranked so low is, of course, the mission system. Even with all the improvements they brought, it still functions pretty similar to Gen 1. So if you want a reminder of my thoughts on missions in Ark, just skip back to that. I will say the progression vibe is also pretty dead on this map as you literally start out with tech armor right away that you don't even need element for. Now let's just have a quick round of nick picks for the funsies. Great spawning in the ground half the time sucks, shadow ming taming sucks, the graphic performance in general of this map sucks, and fuck the canoe mission. Okay, on to number three. Now this is probably going to be my most controversial take, as every time I ask my friends I played with what their favorite map was, they usually say this one. I can definitely see why, but I still have some big annoyances with it that made me put it lower than a few others. First off, the whole concept of the orbital supply drop system is awesome, and I love doing the harder difficulties. Fighting off super strong hordes of enemies that are a bit randomized each time is a super fun challenge, and the wards you get at the end make it all feel worth it. Using the tame titans is just freaking awesome as well. Being able to just smash everything with your own squad of godzillas, and they all have super cool designs and abilities is just super fucking cool. Another epic thing about this map is using all your tame titans against the king titan in the end, 
it's, it's just very epic. Although it would be a lot more epic if the Titan AI wasn't so buggy and they actually attack the boss. And finally, like I say every time, new creatures here are pretty cool. I mean, just look at this thing. Now my main annoyance with this map is just how grindy it is. You pretty much need tech stuff to do anything, and even with the element nodes and orbital supply drops, it takes a while to get some stuff, as the loot can be pretty random. Another super grindy thing is getting to the harder King Titan fights. For example, the Alpha King Titan requires the Beta King Titan trophy, and the Beta King Titan requires the Gamma, and each of these fights requires the Tameable Titan trophy heads to activate. This means you have to kill every titan on the map three times while also taming each of them. And each of those tamed titans have their own tribute requirements as well. So I did the math, and this is the amount of stuff you need to get to the Alpha King Titan fight. Not including other things needed to grind for this fight for your character and other dinos. I mean, just look at that. Even once you get all these titans killed, taming them is a very tedious task too, especially solo. The amount of left clicking you have to do will make your index finger fly off of your hand. Another annoyance I have is with the easier supply drops. 99% of the time you do these, dinos will get stuck somewhere and spawn in places that make it impossible for you to kill them. And even though it's a lot more rare, it has happened a couple times to me on harder drops, and it's super frustrating. Final thing I want to mention as a negative is that I would argue that this map is the least aesthetically pleasing compared to the rest. The majority of it is a very plain wasteland, with just some purple element bits sticking out of the ground. The domes in the rundown city are decently designed, but compared to the other maps, I personally just am not a fan. A good old classic nostalgic island map. If I rated purely for nostalgia and memories this map has brought me, it would easily be number one. However, I want to rate these maps equally, and I think number two is a good spot for it. Beginning with the positives, I want to say the progression system on this map is very well made. Doing the caves to get to the main three bosses and then using the trophies you get from those bosses to do the one big boss. It all feels very fluid, mostly because you don't have to kill those bosses multiple times to get to the final. Next, I want to say the caves themselves are pretty fun. Even though some are too easy and some are extremely hard, I do like the unique challenges they all bring. Also, back to the bosses, I really like the fact that they all have really big strengths and weaknesses. And unless you have one insanely mutated army, you are better off bringing a unique army for each fight. For example, the Broodmother is honestly a pretty tough boss. But if you bring Megatheriums, they get their insane buff off of killing the minions. So it makes them super good for that fight. I could go on about the others, but I don't want to ramble too much here. My final positive is, if you ignore the god-awful Arc AI when they follow you, I really enjoy the challenge of the Tech Cave. It throws big challenges at you with extreme temperatures, powerful dinos, and some pretty fast-killing lava all around you. It's purposely meant to weaken you before you get to the Overseer fight, which I think is super good design. Now my biggest annoyance with this map is just the amount of little annoying shits that will do things like knock you out, knock you off your dino, stun you, steal your shit, steal you. It's just too many, man. Also, the rain and fog weather events are big stinkers. They make art gameplay annoying with either constant lines on your screen or not being able to see two feet in front of you. And my final pet peeve with this map is how plain the ocean biome is. It just feels a lot less detailed and a lot of missed potential to add some cool dinos and make underwater fights fun. Now my all-time favorite map in the game that easily gets the number one spot goes to Aberration. A stunning map visually with a super fun and unique progression system. It doesn't stray too far away from the OG arc format we all know and love. Now time for me to blabble about how amazing this map is. The thing I want to get out of the way first is just how beautiful this map is. With all the mushrooms, crystals, and the glowy underground creatures and environments. It's just awesome. Even the bland surface area has a great looking sky. And I cannot wait to see how this map looks with the remaster. Also, one of the biggest requirements for this map is getting a Rock Drake, and getting your first is an insanely hard and fun journey. If you didn't know already, Rock Drake eggs spawn in the deepest area of the map, where there is the scariest dinos, constant radiation, and liquid element that functions pretty similar to how the lava does on the island. It's a journey that, to this day, still kind of stresses me out with how long it takes and difficulties you face along the way. Super well designed aspect here in my opinion. 
Next up, like I said almost every time, the creatures are really well designed here. Although I have to say that Aberration probably has my favorite dinos. Rock Drakes, Reapers, and Karknos in particular all have some of the most fun taming methods and abilities in my opinion. The light pet system here is also a super fun mechanic, forcing you to have a cute light pet on your shoulder to go into deeper areas so Nameless don't constantly spawn and bite your toes. And the final thing I'll mention here is the boss fight. Similar to the Gen 1 fight, it's a super tough and unique one. It's pretty mechanically challenging as you're forced to constantly move because of the glowy balls that can hurt your character. And at the same time, you're probably shooting the tentacles yourself. This with reaper spawning and stunning tentacle attacks all make the fight super tough and engaging, in my opinion. I think the only big annoyance I have with this map is early game. It can be pretty tough with constant Ravengers and the buggy Aberrant Raptors spawning everywhere. I do have a way of avoiding this though, quick tip. My suggestions being spawning in the Edge 1 and heading to the river nearby for water. Thank me later. One of my other little annoyances are Seekers. Whenever I'm in an area with them nowadays, so many spawn that I honestly prefer the Nameless and I keep the charge light off. And my final small annoyance will have to be the Artifact Cave in the Blue Zone. A lot of it's underwater with jellyfish and carcanos that spawn everywhere in tight areas, which makes it super tedious to get through. The jellyfish blend in with the aberrant environment well too, which makes it super scary and has made me shoot things that even sort of look like jellyfish, just to be sure. And there we go, that is the ranking complete. As I said in the beginning, now that this list is over, I'll get into my thoughts of Ark as a whole. This will be in the same format as the maps for consistency's sake, so we will start with the positives and then negatives. First I want to say, I think the game is a super fun experience if you're willing to put the time into it. It feels like one big adventure filled with dinos, big bosses, guns, and straight up mythical creatures. I mean, what more could you ask for in a game? And next, of course, I have to mention the soundtrack here. Arguably one of the best soundtracks I've ever heard in gaming. Super epic orchestral music I can never get enough of, that is themed perfectly for each map. Gareth Coker, you are a chad. Also, the creatures in general of this game are super well designed in my opinion. All of them have some pretty cool unique purposes and looks, especially the fantasy creatures in my opinion. And finally, I think the game is very replayable. It's a sandbox survival game you can do so much in, and the community has made some crazy maps and mod to shake up your experience even more if you want to. Now for how much I love this game, it definitely isn't perfect. Like one of my biggest complaints about it is that it's not very new player friendly. The game doesn't teach you stuff that well and most likely you're going to have to end up looking up things to really understand it. I can respect a game that just throws you in and expects you to learn things yourself, but such a complex one like Ark, it's more likely to frustrate and confuse players than anything. And next up, if you're an Ark player, you probably expected this one, the bugs. The game is very buggy and sometimes I can forgive it since it's such a big game, but some bugs can be so game-breaking they can literally remove all the progress you have done. I really hope this and the game's insane graphic requirements get fixed on the remaster. Another thing is I think that the grinding of the game can be a bit much at times. For example, the amount of metal you have to get to upgrade to industrial stuff alone is a bit too crazy in my opinion, especially with how slow refining forges are. And finally, I want to mention the PvP side of the game. Although, as I said before, I'm not an expert, but from what I hear, the devs do a poor job handling it. Things like cheats and exploits seem to be in abundance, especially with anything related to snail games. And the balance of it all seems very wonky. This is another area of the game I hope gets better with the remaster. Other than that though, I don't really have any other grievances with it. I feel like the remaster has potential to go big if they fix these issues, especially the better experience for new players. Mostly because I believe the PvE base game experience is fantastic, and if new players have an easier barrier of entry, they'll see it too. Thank you all for the support as always, and I'll see you all in the remaster.